BamaOnline.com senior analyst Travis Ryer joined by senior team reporter Charlie Potter. The Alabama Crimson Tide at 5-1 and one through six games. And with that, Charlie, time to hand out some accolades for this Crimson Tide team at the midway point of the 2023 campaign. We'll start on the offensive side of the ball. We need it. Your offensive MVP for UA at the midway point. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough not to pick Jalen Milrow. You know, he's played uh, better and better as the season's gone on. He overcame that kind of rough start against Texas and has played well at the start of SEC play. Um, you know, he's up to 10.4 yards per attempt, which is fifth in the nation. Uh, his passer rating is, I think, 12th among FF, uh, FBS quarterbacks and third in the conference. So, you know, he's playing, I think, more comfortable, more confident. He's been accurate with the ball, especially down the field, which has been a lethal you know, play for Alabama, whether it's with Jermaine Burton, who had a huge game in, in Texas A&M, Isaiah Bond, who becomes, um, you know, more and more comfortable each week. I, I just think that Milrow and the way he's playing here of late, it, it's tough not to pick somebody else from an offensive MVP standpoint. And that's not even, you know, before mentioning what he's been able to do with his legs. And he's not took off and, and, and ran as much as maybe we expected. But when he does, man, he's lethal. And um, I think – you know, you want to see some things cleaned up, uh, you know, turnovers. He's been holding the ball a little too long and taking some unnecessary sacks and hits. But the guys made plays, you know, last week at AM being a perfect example of that. So, yeah, Jalen Milrow has been um, just better and better each week. And if he continues this as the season goes on, then Alabama's offense can can have a lot of success. Man, I really want to debate you on this. I want to have someone else. I want to say – well, you know, Charlie, in the loss to Texas, he had two <laughs> critical turnovers that directly led to 10 Texas points in a 10-point loss, and that is true. But I don't think Alabama wins at Texas A&M this last weekend in a conference matchup, a divisional conference matchup on the road without Jalen Milrow. So it's really hard to argue with him as the midway point offensive MVP for this team, I guess. If I wanted to go with someone that isn't as sexy a pick because of the position he plays, maybe J.C. Latham at the right tackle spot because even with the issues up front, Charlie, I think that offensive line with him anyway on the right tackle spot has been good. I think I think J.C. Latham has lived up to it. He has, and you know, they, there's still things they need to clean up. I think they want to be better in terms of uh, the run game, you know, that wasn't a, a strong suit this past week in College Station, but they are going against a really stout uh, Texas A&M defensive front. But you know, I, I think that pass protection, even if you look at the stats, um, I think it's been better. And, you know, JC's a guy that's been one of the leaders up front of that offensive line. And so um, I think that you know, he helped a guy like Jaden Roberts this past week, getting his first start on the road. So I, I do think that, the offensive line is improving and kind of going back to your point about Milrow, it, there really isn't another choice on offense from a skill position standpoint, the running backs uh, haven't produced maybe like we thought they would, at least from a number and overall standpoint, uh, Jermaine Burton had a huge game in AM, but you know, he was pretty much MIA against Mississippi state. Uh, they've kind of spread the ball around enough to where one guy hasn't been, totally dominant and that leads to the quarterback being the easy pick. I do like the JC Latham pick though. I don't think the offensive line or at least some of the pieces up front get enough attention or accolades, but I think this group's starting to come together here of late. Let's go over to the defense. And I think if you're Kevin Steele and the rest of that defensive staff, Nick Saban, you like that. It's not an easy choice mm -hmm. or for me, it's not anyway, because multiple guys, are playing at a high level right now at the most important time of the season as you get into the thick of SEC play. So with that, I'm going to ask you, pick me one guy on defense for your midseason MVP. It's tough. I really want to go with Dallas Turner or Chris Braswell. I think that edge rushing duo has been the best in the SEC. Um, you know, Dallas has been on the heater of late. Chris Braswell um, is a guy that he's had – a couple of touchdowns, we saw a, a penalty on Dallas Turner negate that uh, block field goal return in, in College Station. Um, those guys have been great. Uh, I think Caleb Downs has been as advertised, if not more. And he's been uh, – he had a couple mistakes early on that were 
ones you expect from a true freshman. But here of late, man, he's been really good, leads the defense in tackles and interceptions. But even with him missing the Mississippi State game, I, it's hard for me not to pick Deontay Lawson because I think um, you know Kevin still deserves a lot of credit. I think this defense has improved clearly. Um, but I think the play of the inside backers has been critical in that. And I think Deontay Lawson leads that charge. Um, you know, again, he missed a game, but he's he's a really sound player. And I think for me, what does it because there's so many guys you could pick on this defense just in terms of playmaking, and you look at their stats and where they rank in the SEC. Heck, I think Terry and Arnold could be thrown into that mix. But the play that I mentioned a minute ago, where Chris Braswell blocks the field goal, he returns it for a touchdown, and you look 15, 20 yards behind the play, and Dallas Turner gets a, a penalty that um, negates the play. And granted, it. I guess it fits the description of blindside block, but it wasn't some of the egregious ones we've seen in the past. But who's over there first um, in Dallas Turner's face but Deontay Lawson? And that's a guy – Dallas has played a lot more football than Deontay, but he's not afraid to speak up and to let people you know, know whenever they've done something wrong. And I think that's huge for this defense, that accountability. So not only has he played at an elite level and been uh, an improvement, I think, at that position – but he is you know, that voice uh, in that defense, in the locker room, uh, on the practice field that they've needed. And I think it's been a big plus for this defense. Yeah, he is sort of the catalyst, I guess you could say, of that entire defense, especially with the position he plays. Uh, of course, we're talking about Deontay Lawson. You know, you said it, though, man. I could look at Malachi Moore, who I think has been really good. I could look at Dallas Turner. Uh, you talked about Chris Braswell. Uh, Lawson to me is a great pick. If I went somewhere else for me anyway, it would probably be Caleb Downs at this point uh, because Deontay did miss a game with injury. We're not sure about Malachi more now with his situation health wise. Uh, and Caleb Downs has just grown and grown and grown on a weekly basis, leads that defense and in tackles interceptions each of the last two games. And Charlie, the interception against A&M, might rank right now as the biggest defensive play of the year for Alabama. I'm not sure where you're at on that, but again, given the timing of Milrow throwing the pick there down seven, and then right after that, Downs is able to go and get the football back. And then Alabama pretty much took control there in the second half at A&M after that. I, I, I'll go Caleb Downs, but if you went Downs, I'd probably have gone Deontay. So. <laughs> tit for tat there special teams i think this one's going to be easy uh literally the guy doesn't miss at least he hasn't this year that's my pick anyway in will Riker. yeah i mean i think james burnup deserves to be mentioned because he's made tremendous improvement but not only has will Riker been perfect on field goals and extra points the job he did coming in in place of james burnup this past week whenever he went out with his injury as the backup punter i don't know if that'll be his permanent role but, um, you know, he, he averaged over 40 yards a kick. And uh, that's huge in a game where field position is critical on the road. So, yeah, Will's made all 12 kicks this season. He's made 25 in a row dating back to last year's Tennessee game. He keeps just racking up these points. Um, I think he's tied for seventh place in NCAA history in terms of career points with 480. So uh, I think he's 50, 51 away from the record. That's definitely doable. Uh, for him in this offense, but yeah, I mean the dude's been been stellar. I think he probably wants a couple kickoffs back that went out of bounds, but other than that, you can't really. And that's that's nitpicking at the job that that Will Riker's done this season because he's been outstanding for Alabama. Honorable mention for true freshman kicker Connor Talty just for the tackle he made at Mississippi <laughs> yeah. State, right? Yeah. Anytime I mean, a kicker does that, you got to give a shout out. Yeah, you know he he made kickers look great with that stop. Uh, the coverage wasn't so good. That's why he had to make the tackle, but he got the job done nonetheless. So there you go. Mid-season MVPs, according to Charlie Potter and myself. Charlie, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no problem, man. Always good to catch up with these.